Today is an exciting day because the Optolong Elehance has finally arrived. This is a dual narrowband filter, which is a fantastic filter I heard, and it blocks out all light except a few band passes, which is Hydrogen Alpha, Oxygen 3, and Hydrogen Beta, I believe. Not only will this help my nebulae be a lot more punchy, but it will also give me more contrast and isolate those regions within the emission lines that this filter lets through. This will even allow me to shoot a lot of those narrowband targets you really just couldn't shoot in broadband. So this is going to be a huge help, and this will also be a huge help in moonlight to have a lot more contrast and get a lot of that nebulae boosted out from that moonlight. Check this out. This thing is just a straight mirror. This is so weird. I got it put on the coma corrector and got it replaced with the UV IR cut filter I was using. Man, I am excited to get first light with this. I haven't shot Duo Band in a while because of, you know, the full moon being just so bad with no filter. You, you, you take a even 120 second exposure and everything's just blown out. It's super annoying. All right, so I think I have decided on this Seagull Nebula for tonight. I think this will be a great target to test out this filter. It's more of a narrowband target as it is, so I think this will be a great target to test it on. I've never shot this target before, so I'm pretty excited to finally get an image on this. And I have high expectations. I can hopefully get about four hours or so. I can get about four hours of integration on this, maybe a little bit more if I can, I don't know though. The winter sky sets pretty dang early now, especially since we're getting deeper and deeper in the galaxy season. So I will really just have to see how much integration I can pull off on this, but I know it's in the sky for a good while still. The only thing that kind of scares me about this filter, well not really scares me, but you know, kind of annoying, kind of concerning, is that my uh, plate solving subs with polar alignment and everything and my focusing subs are going to have to be a lot longer So focusing and polar alignment will probably take a lot longer, which is kind of annoying But uh, just something we'll have to deal with sunset is finally here So I'm about to head outside get focused and polar aligned and all that and I should be up in imaging here pretty soon I hope to be imaging pretty quick tonight because I want to get as much data as possible to maybe even process the data tonight I think that would be cool I don't plan on shooting Seagull Nebula all night, of course, since it's going to set uh, in just a few hours after dusk, since it is now spring now and no longer winter. So I plan on maybe shooting M81 and M82 with this filter to try to help uh, get some nebula out in the data I already have, which I'm making a video on. It's going to be a super good image. All right, it is finally dark. And I'm about to get up and going with the setup. It is freezing cold out here, and it's kind of windy too. Oh my gosh. Whew. Okay, we're gonna press go. And it's plate solving. It found it, so we're gonna hit next. And the scope should start moving. Okay, we are polar aligned. We are sub arc minute, so that's good. We are going to try to focus up the telescope here, and we're going to be using five second exposures to try to get the, you know, most amount of light, but still keep the sub length at a decent uh, fast rate so, you know, we don't take ages to focus. So here's what the focusing looks like on the ASI Air. It gives you the pixel size of the star and keeps you updated constantly on a single star. So we just got to get it down to probably two-ish pixels, maybe above, maybe like three, depending on the brightness of the star. This is amazing. You can see the nebula in the picture in just a 10 second, 10 second sub at ISO 252, uh, which is like the sweet spot of ISO for the ASI 585. But wow, look at that. You can start to see the nebulosity coming out. This is insane. I cannot wait to get a full five minute exposure on this and see what it looks like. So, the conclusion. 
The filter performed absolutely fantastic, and I was super happy with it. And just, even the five minute exposures were just incredible, and after getting around two hours of data, I was able to pull out an image I'm super happy with. I will definitely recommend this filter. This filter is fantastic, especially if you want to shoot kind of more narrowband targets and you're shooting under either moonlit or light polluted skies uh, with an OSC camera, which most of us are shooting with OSC cameras, then this is a filter I definitely would recommend. Of course, when shooting duo band though, just like with any duo band filter, uh, star colors will lack because you are not really getting the full spectrum of the star colors with the filter, so your stars will be kind of a bluish tint, or what I choose to do is just kind of make them more white because I'm not a huge fan of just most of the stars being just all kind of one tint of blue. So they're actually not even really that blue, they're more kind of a teal, uh, which you can fix, but normally I just kind of make the stars more so white, leaving a little bit of color behind. But of course, that comes down to preference and processing. Processing this data was super easy because the nebulae was super pop in the image. I mean, it was, it was there. I mean, you could just see it in the stack. It was, it was gorgeous. All right, so now I'm going to do the image reveal. Enjoy this image. I think this is probably one of my best images. I know I'll say that all the time, but every image I get, I'm just so happy with.